Well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, appreciate the uh, time this afternoon everyone's spending with us. Um, <clears throat> so, again, my name is Simon Volt. I'm the Regional Account Director here at V Technologies. Uh, so, for those of you who are using Starship today, welcome. Um, and for those of you who haven't used Starship yet, you know, we hope to see you soon. Um, but today we're going to walk through kind of a um, uh, full presentation as well as a demo, kind of how Fishful and Starship kind of communicate with one another and kind of the advantages of not only how Starship interacts with Fishful, but what you would get also from the Fishful inventory solution as well. And I have Sean Merkley here joining me today as well to talk more about the Fishful application. So let's get into it here. Um, so again, as I mentioned, um, you know, for those of you using QuickBooks um, in, uh, Enterprise, QuickBooks uh, Online, um, right, really any QuickBooks um, solution today and thinking about getting into an inventory management software, um, that's where Fishbowl is going to come into play for you all um, as it here is, you know, rated as number one manufacturing inventory manager for, you know, QuickBooks users. Um, and we've been partners with Fishbowl now for many, many years. Um, and then again, from a shipping perspective, you know, that's where we kind of partner nicely with Fishbowl um, and bringing in that information to process all of your labels, uh, bill lading documents for LTL shipping, which we're going to walk through today. So again, just a little bit of background on VTEC. Um, so we've been around since 1987, um, so well over 30 years in the shipping software um, world. Uh, we partnered uh, with uh, companies like UPS and FedEx, kind of joined their uh, programs, um, such as like their uh, UPS Ready provider program, as well as the FedEx Compatible Solutions program, um, and essentially just based, basically working with those carriers um, to essentially kind of help them uh, generate those labels needed um, in their space. Um, also, from a um, fishbowl perspective, as I mentioned, we've been partners now since really 2013. Uh, and the nice thing with Starship and Fishbowl is we have a plug-and-play interface uh, that we've designed in-house that kind of ties nicely in pulling in your sales orders or your um, shipment documents uh, into our solution. And again, right now we have over 10,000 customers using our application across um, you know North America essentially um, today. <clears throat> So just a couple of things here to know about Starship, right? So again, as I mentioned, we have a seamless fishbowl integration. Um, we developed that in-house here a couple of years ago. Uh, again, it's all plug and play, no customizations needed. Uh, and we're reading uh, real-time information. So the minute that you process a sales order to processing a shipment document that you'll see today, um, that will flow right into Starship for you to start processing that shipment uh, and then getting that tracking information back into fishbowl. Again, having the ability of processing your sales orders and your um, shipment documents, Right, either way you want to process those is, is completely okay with us. Uh, but primarily our fishbowl users today are essentially using the shipment document, doing their pick and pack, which Sean will take you through here as well momentarily. Again, Starship being a multi-carrier uh, platform, uh, not only working with your UPS and FedEx and post office carriers, but also having the ability of working with 20 plus uh, LTL carrier selections on a direct basis um, gives us that multi-mode capability um, to ship between one um, mode to another. Uh, in real time to make that uh, best decision for that particular shipment. And then also we have various rules um, that we can uh, set up inside of Starship from uh, ship via to freight rules, um, even printing logic um, that basically is going to kind of streamline that process for you. So if you want to enable markups on your rates, you can, that we can put back into Fishbowl. Um, if you want to set various ship via rules uh, in which you can pr pretty much have a um, for instance, you know, you want to look at a three-day beyond point and have it shipped to a, a expedited service. You can do that with our ship via rules uh, inside of Starship. So again, kind of just streamlining that process versus a manual process you may all do today. And then really what we're here all to talk about today is really simplifying international, right? Um, and what we're going to walk you through here momentarily is kind of how we can work not only in the LTL mode, but also kind of focus on the international processing, because I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, um, kind of feel that to be a, a strain point. Uh, from what we hear, um, we're going to show you how Starship can simplify processing your documentation needed uh, and how we store various pieces of that information. <clears throat> so again, when we look at Starship, right, we look at how do we solve, you know, certain pain points that you may be having today, right? And when we look at pain points, right, and we hear a lot from hazmat shippers, we hear a lot in the international shipper side, right? If you're shipping parcel LTL and using multiple platforms, you know, UPS, a FedEx platform, as well as, you know, three or four LTL carrier platforms to get your rates through. Um, again, Starship is designed to bring all that in one application and kind of streamline that entire process. We focus mainly in the manufacturing distribution um, space. Um, so again, if you fit in that mold, it's going to be a perfect fit for Starship potentially for us. So again, I encourage you to all kind of take a look at this list, but these are kind of our main 
points when we start talking to a customer that we start looking into and where we can um, help streamline things. This is a quick rundown of carrier lists um, or carriers that we support um, from a parcel and LTL perspective along with a 3PL perspective. So here's a rough, roughly about a couple dozen or so uh, carriers that we integrate to. <clears throat> we do support a couple 3PLs such as like Freight Quote, Freight View, and Worldwide Express um, as part of our, our portfolio. Um, but then again, all the other ones are pretty much a direct basis. Um, so meaning where you would have your own rates associated with that carrier and we would pull those rates into our platform uh, for you to rate shop very easily. Uh, then again, if there are carriers not on this list, we can support you as well uh, by using what we call a standard BOL module um, in which we can generate a pro number, generate the bill of lading for you, uh, and then still uh, get the, that information back into Fishbowl. And then lastly, we just want to talk quickly about, because I know Fishbowl has a e-commerce uh, plugin as well, uh, and primarily our customers are all flowing through that anyway. However, Starship does have the capability of connecting to different e-commerce platforms. Um, and these are the ones that we communicate with today. Um, so if you do want Starship to communicate directly and pull orders out of those e-commerce platforms, we can uh, versus a um, you know, flow through a Fishbowl um, uh, platform yourself. With that being said, I'm gonna sort of turn it over to Sean who will talk to you a little bit about Fishbowl. Yeah, thanks, Simon. And, and, and again, thank you everybody for joining this webinar. We really appreciate it. You guys taking time out of your day to listen to us talk and, and discuss Fishbowl, enhancing Fishbowl with Starship. And we are super grateful to Starship um, or B Technologies for being such a great partner for uh, with us for, for many years. So what is Fishbowl? Um, so Fishbowl, we are the number one manufacturing and inventory management software for QuickBooks users. We've been working with QuickBooks for over 15 years. We, we, we've been a gold developer with them um, for many years. I have a really close uh, partnership and relationship with QuickBooks. And, um, you know, we have, a, we have a seamless integration with QuickBooks. And um, I'm gonna go over a little bit how Fishbowl works with QuickBooks and some of our popular features and some of our, um, some of the integrations that we have um, out of the box with, with Fishbowl. And, and when you buy Fishbowl, some of the integrations you have access to right away. So first of all, I just wanna, I wanna back up and, and kind of set the table with with QuickBooks and what it can do, and it does really well with um, accounting and financials. Um, but when it comes to warehouse operations and business operations, it has some features, but um, it, it does it does leave a little on the table um, when it comes to you know, your more complex um, operations in the warehouse and with manufacturing uh, specifically. And this. This illustration kind of, it, it displays how Fishbowl can fill the gap for QuickBooks users as they are growing their business, right? If they're in that zero to a million dollars in revenue, or they're, you know, a little over, you know, a million dollars to $5 million, they start to experience more pain points with QuickBooks. And so Fishbowl is a perfect add-on to QuickBooks to help you keep scaling your business without having to move completely over to a custom ERP or a, you know, one of those larger ERPs like NetSuite or SAP, which can get very, very pricey, pricey and very quickly. And so we kind of bridge that gap. We help you scale, stay on QuickBooks. And plus it's, it's kind of a pain to switch your accounting software and your financial software that you use in your business. So Fishbowl can really bridge the gap for you. So just, just kind of going over some of our, our value proposition, Fishbowl really, it takes over your operations. Think of Fishbowl as a, a bolt-on, like a front-end management system to your QuickBooks, um, QuickBooks software. So you wanna, you wanna streamline your sales process, sales order fulfillment, purchasing, manufacturing. We handle all of those operational processes inside of Fishbowl and then, once those transactions are fulfilled or completed, we send the accounting and financial data over to QuickBooks and sync, sync the two systems together. End-to-end um, -to -end management, that kind of goes 
hand in hand with the first bullet point. You know, when it comes to sales, purchasing, manufacturing, there's there's all these little steps. Um, there's an order of operation, right, that you have in your business, and we we help with that, right? Whether it's sales and you're doing your pick, pack, and ship process, or you're purchasing and you're doing your receiving and reconciling, um, Fishbowl really handles that end-to-end -end, uh, management. We also have a seamless integration with QuickBooks and Xero. Uh, Xero is another accounting software that we integrate with. And then Fishbowl just gives you more visibility, more reporting into your, your inventory across multiple locations. You can see your, your different cost layers of your, of your items and, and your relationships with your vendors. So there's, there's over 100 reports, standard reports in Fishbowl that you can use. There's dashboards, they're customizable. And really, Fishbowl just gives you that um, traceability, that visibility into your inventory. Now, going to popular features, I'm not gonna read through all of these, but these are really, most of these are, are focused on manufacturing features. So we, we have multi-level bill of materials. We can do cost roll-ups. When, when you produce a finished good, we will tell you exactly how much it costs you to pr produce that, that finished good. Um, we also have lot tracking and serial number tracking and custom tracking when it comes to the item level detail. And that's one thing that we we have that, that QuickBooks um, doesn't have. With QuickBooks, you can track your items, but you have to pick between lot numbers or serial numbers. You can't do both. But Fishbowl allows you to track those items by both and more. And, and we can do custom tracking, batch numbers, revision numbers, and um, we can just give you a lot more visibility into your your items um, and we also have I mean we also have um, the ability to automate your work orders as well and then uh, this is the last slide but we, we also have a, a lot of integrations pre-built into fishbowl that you can have access to whether you need to pull in orders from your e-commerce marketplace your website um, your shipping, software like Starship, um, and then EDI, payment gateways, you can take payments in Fishbowl. We also can, can connect with your point of sale system. And Fishbowl also has an out of the box point of sale system as well, if you would prefer to go that route. So we have lots of integrations. Again, we know your business, you're probably selling through multiple channels and you need to bring orders into Fishbowl from your Shopify site, from your, your uh, Magento site, whatever it is, we can pull those in orders into Fishbowl. All right, so let's move on to the demo portion. So <laughs> this, is, this is our Fishbowl um, application here. And we're just gonna kind of go over the pick, pack, and ship process inside of Fishbowl. Obviously, I touched on some, some other things like manufacturing and purchasing, but today we'll, we'll stay focused on the sales a sales order fulfillment process inside of Fishbowl. And I know we have some Fishbowl customers on the line, so this might be uh, uh, repetitive and you're like, yeah, I do this every day. So I, I apologize, but for those that aren't Fishbowl customers, this is for you. Um, so this is, this is Fishbowl and Fishbowl is very modularized. So we have different modules for different purposes to store different information. And right now we're, we're, we have the sales order module open. And you can see there's a search panel here in the, in the middle. This kind of shows you all the open sales orders that we have in the system. So you can double click on those and you know, go in, edit, modify your sales orders um, as you need to. And you can change the search filters on here too. So you can look up past orders, um, past voided orders, past fulfilled orders and um, print out receipts or invoices for your customers. But moving on to the sales order, this is where we would generate a new sales order. And we have, a, we have one ready to go right here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go into this customer field. I can click on there. There we go. Um, and I'll go ahead and select 
And I don't, I don't know if Simon did, which vendor did we decide what I was going to pick or does it matter? Uh, you could pick Brighton. That's fine. <laughs> Simon and I were working on uh, some of the different pieces of information we were going to use. Um, so I, I just put in Brighton bikes for my customer. Um, and you can see there's a, there's a notification, a customer alert, if you will. This is a feature in Fishbowl that just talks about credit limits and um, things like that for, for sales orders. So you can create different rules. Fishbowl allows you to do different pricing rules. You can do credit returns. You can add discounts to your sales orders. There's a lot you can do here. Um, so I added a new customer and um, I'm going to go ahead and change the carrier here to XPO. I'm going to go use our LTL ship, shipping carrier and then we'll do the service we'll mark as LTL. Um, you can see I got my bill to address, my ship to address, those are um, populated automatically once I select the customer. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add product um, and then you just type in the product number that you wanna add to the sales order. And then it adds a line item. So I'm gonna go ahead and add three line items here quickly and then uh, I'll show you guys how you can you can make inline edits to uh, the line items if you want to. So we got my extreme mountain bike, my my brake cables, and my speed chain. I'm going to add some different quantities. So you can click on some of these different fields on the line item level, and you can change the quantities. Very very easy, very smooth, and um, and also each of these. Each of these uh, product numbers, they have, I mean, and you can see here on the line item, you can see the markup, you can see the margin, the part cost. So it kind of gives you extreme detail. If you want, we can, we can take those columns off. Um, so the, the sales order is very um, customizable. So once I have the line items that I need, I'm going to go ahead and issue the sales order. And that makes it a live order in my system. It went from an estimate status to an issued status. And then this is the sales order module where you do all of your SO generation and you're modifying your edits, revisions to the sales order. Um, and then we also have sales tax capabilities as well. Um, so you can, you can utilize that. Let's go ahead and go to the picking phase the picking step of the process so you, there's a button here at the top toolbar it'll take me right into the pick module and you can see there's there's symbols next to each line item indicating that this inventory is available and available to pick for the sales order and this is the this is where your warehouse workers will you know take the pick ticket go out on the on the in the warehouse and start picking these items you can you can also do grouped picks. So if you want your warehouse worker to pick five sales orders at one time, you can do that as well. There's a lot you can do here. Um, and it's by location too. Um, so if I, if I hit start, I can start my pick. I can print my pick, pick list right now. I'm going to hit no thanks for now. But if I click on one of these line items, once you hit start, down here, there's two fields. There's a pick location and a destination. So Fishbowl is selling your, your warehouse worker exactly where to go and what location to pick the inventory from and then where to take it. So after you pick the inventory from its default location, you want to take it to a packing and shipping area. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this pick. Okay, I have a couple items here that are tracked by serial numbers. The FG2100 is tracked by serial number, so you need to tell Fishbowl which serial numbers you're going you're gonna to select. We also have a mobile app called Fishbowl Go, and you can, your warehouse team can use the, the mobile app to pick, uh, pick the sales orders as well. So I finished the pick. Now I'm going to move on to the final two steps, the packing and the shipping step. And I'm going to let Simon finish the, the shipping step. But as far as packing, um, everything um, is lumped into carton number one, you can see, right? And you can see my carrier, my carrier service carried through. I'm going to add a carton. 
Okay, and right here you, you can put in um, dimensions if, if you have carton level dimensions. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave those blank for now. Okay, and then I'm going to move one line item here, the carton number. Let's see, I'm actually going to move these top two line items. You can just drag and drop these into the second carton. Okay, and then at the carton level, you can see if I, if I click on that carton level line, um, down here there's some fields, open fields, and this is where a lot of the shipping information is going to be populated. Um, but that's kind of the packing step. You can move items around between cartons. Um, and then if I hit pack here, in the top toolbar, the order has not been paid. So this is another alert, no payment right but we're going to go ahead and skip over that step and then we can print a packing list um, so we can preview this and this is something that you would put into um, into each carton right you can see this is kind of our standard report all right so that's the that's the pack step i'm going to go ahead and hand it over to simon to show us what starship can do at the shipping shipping step <clears throat> Thanks, Sean. Um, I'm just going to save this here so we have it um, as well. Um, okay, so when we open up Starship, <clears throat> um, we're going to basically log in here. Um, and essentially, when you log in, you're going to come to essentially your home screen with all of your available orders um, that have now been packed essentially inside of Fishbowl. Um, and you'll see that they're all listed here um, for you. Um, some of our customers um, have barcodes right on their um, shipment dock or sales order. Um, if you do, we can scan them in with a wedge type scanner to this field here, hit enter, and the order will automatically come in. As I mentioned earlier, once you know um, Sean finished his um, step there in creating that shipment document, all of those orders essentially are basically shown here. And I'm just going to refresh this screen here quickly so we can pull in the one that Sean just did. Right. <clears throat> so um, once we refresh this, You'll see here's my order 87 that Sean just processed. It's ready for me to go ahead and ship against it. Again, I have a couple ways of doing it. One of them is being using this little truck icon off to the right. Um, one thing you'll know is that there is all these column headers here. Um, you can add any one of these as a filter. So if it's easier for you to filter on customer name, uh, maybe by city, um, you can do them either way. It doesn't really matter, but it's up to you how you want to filter these out or if it's just easier to have them in a list like this and just go right down the list to process, it's completely up to you as a user. Uh, but again, we'll go ahead and just bring this order in. And then once you see here, um, you're gonna have everything come in kind of basically in one, in one page, right? So there's no scrolling through uh, multiple tabs or anything along those lines. Um, but essentially here, you're gonna have um, your order number. It's gonna populate just from a quick check and balance um, to make sure that we're working with the correct order number. Um, and then right over to the right of that is your ship from area and ship to section. The ship from is going to default to your location. However, Starship does have the capabilities in here, if you drill into it, um, of setting up various uh, sender IDs. Um, and you can see I have two already stored in here. You can have as many sender IDs as you like. And we use sender IDs to really reflect different ship from addresses. So we have uh, quite a few customers who drop ship um, and want to reflect the different ship from address. And this is where we can map in um, from Fishbowl the correct ship from address if you prefer us to do that. Or as a user, you can easily select a different address right from the dropdown um, that's previously saved as well. So that's an option for you. And then the ship to section just coming in from Fishbowl here. Um, and note this because we're shipping internationally here, um, we have basically um, no address validation as built in for international purposes. Domestic, you will have a full address validation that's up here in the upper right corner um, to validate the street zip code as well as a business versus a residential location for you. Um, so just keep that in mind. In here, um, we just have a ship via section being brought in that um, Sean selected XPO as the carrier. So if we drill into this, you can see we have a variety of things in here when it comes to LTL and international processing. Um, and just to highlight a few things in here, I'm not going to walk through every field. Uh, but pretty much here you have your um, transportation section, who's paying for the transportation, if it's yourself as a prepaid user, um, or if it's third party, um, whatever you want to do, or I'm sorry, wrong that field, um, recipient or third party. Um, and then essentially here you have duties and taxes for international purposes as well, which defaults to recipient, 
which again, 99% of the users have that defaulted to a recipient anyway. Um, and then again, you'll have down here from an LTL perspective, the ability to electronically tender. That's one unique thing about Starship here, giving you that ability to electronic tender, meaning that we're gonna send an API call out to XBO in this case to let them know how many pallets, you know, the weights, the date it's ready and et cetera. Um, you can also have a call option as well as a daily pickup option if you prefer. Um, but again, you know, it's defaulted to electronic for us to just send that electronically to them and have that pickup made. Here, you're just going to have the ability of telling them what date um, essentially to come and pick up and also your date uh, window of um, when it's ready to when you close, right? And that's very important that the close date is scheduled as well. And then Starship, because we work with many different carriers, we have the capabilities of getting the uh, pro number, the trackable number for your shipment back in from the API in this case, right? So XBO, when we ship and process, will return back a pro number that will essentially put back into Fishbowl for you in this case. The bill lading number is just a reference number that can be auto-generated or entered by you as a user. Um, and then down here, just some um, international fields for um, broker, if you're using your own broker versus what the carrier provides, um, as well as like importer of record if you're set up that way as well. So again, you have a lot of information in here, um, again, that we can store. Um, you don't need to enter it every single time. Um, and then over here on the international tab from an international processing standpoint, this is where we're building out that commercial invoice for you as well. And the values coming in from the line items on the order that Sean processed are all reflected here along with your freight total as well. Um, and that's what customs will use in this case to clear that shipment across the border. Um, one thing to note here, um, for those users, Canada being exempt uh, part of the USMCA um, agreement, uh, but for anyone shipping it, you know, internationally um, into Europe, Asia, anywhere in the world, um, we do have a um, ACE integration um, built into Starship. So we can essentially bring all the information from Starship into ACE to basically file for your ITN numbers that are required for shipments uh, for any commodities over $2,500 in value. Um, so we can bring all that information into that portal, have you basically confirm the information, and then that will send back an ITN number for you to process the shipment. Um, so that's automatically built for you. You don't have to worry about entering the information a secondary time here. So um, continuing along, um, the shipment details section is essentially just kind of the accessorials. Again, you can manually choose, unselect, select various um, you know, uh, options for this particular shipment. If a lift gate was required, limited access, et cetera. Um, very important you select it. Otherwise, the carrier doesn't get acknowledgement of it and show up with the wrong equipment on the delivery side. So again, we um, talk about either manually selection, a manual selection or an auto selection in which uh, we can set various conditions here um, to have them auto checked for you by customer if you prefer. Um, and then that's down below, kind of what Sean did already for us, which is the beautiful thing about our fishbowl integration is everything's already been packed. We don't need to worry about a user coming in here and trying to move items around. You can't really do that anyway, it won't let you. Uh, but essentially the way Sean packed it is essentially how it shows up in Starship um, in its own carton right, with it's basically any dimensions, you know, again, we're going to pull in those dimensions um, that Sean would have entered, but because he entered zero by zero by zero, those are the dimensions that came in. Um, so as a user, you can enter in here if you prefer, but again, we can map to the carton level detail in Fishbowl if you provide those dimensions to us. Uh, but again, you have all your items packed already. Um, you do have up here, if you need a secondary pallet for this shipment, you can essentially add a secondary pallet and then basically uh, move boxes onto that pallet. So if you wanted to here, you can add a pallet and say, I wanted to take these you know, this box here and same thing like fishbowl, drag and drop. Now I have one box with my items here on that pallet and my other um, box on my first pallet here. Starship does have its own packaging database. So essentially you can store various dimensions of your skids. If you have uh, standard skids, you can store those here along with your box dimensions as well can be stored and utilized. Um, and then basically Starship basically is going to um, require you to store various key pieces of information in order to process the shipment. Um, and by that, I mean in the line item section here is where we store things by the item number in Fishbowl. So things like your values, right, are very important from an international perspective that we're using, but also your weights um, are coming in from Fishbowl and then groups or NMFC codes, right, for LTL processing. Um, so here we're using a group name. Um, versus an NMFC co um, code and uh, description. Um, so you can use either or is acceptable. Um, but again, we're using electronics in this case and giving them a class 60, and that's what will be populated onto bill of lading. Also note, at the item level, we can also store your hazmat profiles. So any of those on a call 
are shipping hazardous, we can also store your hazmat profile so you don't need to enter that information each and every time when you process the SKU. On the international tab, you're basically going to store all of your Schedule B information. You have your USMCA document already prepared, ready to go and print. So again, because we store this information on the front end and from the beginning, you don't need to worry about entering these item numbers each and every time when processing international. So that's kind of what we do there on the international tab. And then essentially, um, the main feature of Starship is the rating, right? In LTL, we will never give you a published rate because we know the LTL discounts are pretty high in, in nature. So we're going to return back a contracted rate, in this case for XBO 218. Um, and then we apply, um, show you an applied rate. The applied rate is essentially using those freight rules I mentioned earlier, um, setting a markup of your choice, you know, 20%, $5 a pallet, whatever you want to have um, sent back into Fishbowl is essentially what's going to be written back. But here you'll see that I'm going to put back $240 into my order. So that way when I invoice my customer, that's what they're going to pay me and covering any miscellaneous fees that, you know, may happen during transit um, that I may co be covering for myself. Again, if I'm not happy with what XBO is showing me here, Starship, the neat thing about it is going to give you a rate shop option here. So you have um, either can kick with this little button that says shop all. I can also set up a rate shop rule, which will run behind the scenes when I bring the order in um, at the beginning and pick the carrier that is the least expensive option. But again, if I want to just make a quick call out to all my carriers on the license, it's going to return back to me what my rates are. This is going to save you all a lot of time from having to go to each portal to get a rate each and every time. So essentially within, a, you know, not even a minute, within a few seconds, you're going to get back all of your rates. So again, and we're going to return back to you all of your LTL carriers, as well as your parcel carriers that are available for that shipment. And you can see here in this example that XBO is kind of third in line. Um, and you can sort on any one of these columns. And I have it sorted on my negotiated rates. But for XBO, it's going to cost me $218. However, if you look just above that, you'll see UPS and FedEx, same, you know, it's actually going to get there a day faster for both carriers but that's going to cost me significantly less money. So if I wanted to in this example, I could easily select UPS as the carrier of choice, and that will switch it automatically to UPS, switch the mode to parcel, and then that will return back um, multiple tracking numbers in the fishbowl um, for me. For this example, I'll keep it LTL, uh, but again, this just kind of gives you a quick bird's eye view of kind of all the carriers available to you for this particular shipment that might be on your license. And again, you can hide columns or um, have a different view if you prefer. But again, this is kind of a neat way and quick way to getting those rates that you all negotiated so hard for. So again, the last step in the process, the ship and process, right? So now what Starship will do is basically generate your documentation, right? We're gonna send the pro number information back into Fishbowl. We're gonna update that status in Fishbowl. So I'll just walk you through a couple of these documents here to give you a bird's eye view of what we just printed, right? So essentially the first document you're gonna see is in this case, the XBO bill of lading. So again, we're gonna return that pro number. There's that pro number for the shipment. So we don't need to wait till the driver gets in there at the end of the day to assign a pro number any longer. That will be automatically done for you. We'll have all our consignee, our ship from, the description of the goods. If there's an NMFC number present, we'll list that here as well. Your class and standard signature at the bottom and off to the driver it goes. You also have the option of printing your commercial, well, and that option, you're gonna to have to require a commercial invoice. Um, in this example, so this is our standard commercial invoice that we'll print with this order for XBO. So again, we're going to have that pro number information, consignee, all of the goods associated to the order, their corresponding Schedule B numbers that we've stored, and then their values, right? And this is what we're going to use um, to declare um, those goods across the border in Canada in this example. You have your USMCA document as well that will print out of Starship each and every time. So again, pretty standard document here. And then last but not least, we have our pallet labels. So if you're not using pallet labels today, I highly encourage them because if that bill of lading document um, gets lost, the driver has no idea where the shipment is supposed to go. So these are standard four by six labels that can be printed. We have a couple different variations in Starship, but essentially all have the same information from to the bill of lading number barcode, the pro number barcode, so they can easily scan that and regenerate the documents as needed. Um, for those of you who are doing uh, collect shipping or uh, a carry we don't support, this would be your document that would be printed. It's just pretty generic uh, bill of lading, straight bill of lading, um, and essentially has all the same information you just saw. Carrier, the pro number that's returned, all the same information as before. Collect, prepaid, or third party. Again, this document you can customize as well, um, however you want it to, to view. Uh, but again, kind of gives you pretty straight uh, forward information on this. So I'll take you all back into Fishbowl here to kind of conclude this um, and basically show you what the write back look like here. Um, so you can see now that the status, we marked it as shipped automatically. 
Again, it's a setting, so some of our customers rather prefer to click the ship button in Fishbowl. You can still do that. Um, it's just a setting. We just don't update the status. Um, and then we'll also for um, Palette for uh, LTL, we're going to only return a pro number at the first carton level inside the Fishbowl order here. So you'll see there's the XBO pro number. Your pro number is also down here, and those are those applied rates down here as well uh, from a freight cost perspective. From a parcel perspective, we will update each carton with its own tracking information. Uh, that's the main difference between parcel and LTL. So, and then last but not least, I'll just take a quick view here. Starship also comes with a dashboard, um, full dashboard suite um, of reports, heat maps, charts, all available for your viewing pleasure. Um, so you have access, and here's your heat map that comes with the license um, that you can see all your distribution points inside of North America. Um, you can drill into it by carrier if you prefer versus a whole overview. Um, and again, all of these charts can be customized, you know, with a simple, you know, click of a filter. Um, and you can get a kind of good bird's eye view of what's happening month to month, week to week, et cetera. Um, also in here, you have basically access to our notification email um, templates as well. Um, so here you basically have, let um, me show you an example here. Uh, so here, that's not the one I wanted to show you. Let's see. Here's a good example here. So this is kind of just give you an idea of what you can do. So you have a personalized template designer that you can make your email notifications feel however they want to be, right? So here is just the logo, be on the lookout for XBO, when to expect the delivery of that. Um, one thing I didn't include here as part of my template is my pro number, but you can include a pro number um, if you prefer as well. You can add coupon codes, et cetera. So again, you have a lot of information at your fingertips to let your customer be aware of what's available to them. Um, so again, that's you know sort of what just comes out of the box, uh, but we leave that up to you how you want to design. Yeah, thank you everyone. Appreciate the time, and um, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks everybody.